The Whaley House gets its name from the resident's previous owners, the Whaley family. Built for them back in 1857, the grand home is known throughout San Diego as having witnessed more history than any other building in the city. Long considered a mansion during its time, the Whaley House has functioned as a multitude of services from a general store to a theatre, but the time between such ventures was fraught with heartache and chaos. The head of the Whaley family, Thomas Whaley, designed the home himself, with construction beginning in 1856, completed in the following year. The Whaley House was the very first of its kind in the city of San Diego. Thomas was quoted as saying, my new house when completed will be the most handsome, most comfortable and convenient place in town or within 150 miles of here. If only he could have been wrong. While it's true that his home was indeed handsome, the horrors that followed were anything but. Shortly after the birth of the Whaley son, Thomas Jr., they were met with tragedy. The poor child had contracted scarlet fever and died just 18 months after his birth. Not soon after, a fire broke out and destroyed part of the house that Thomas had transformed into a general store. Dismayed over their significant losses, the Whaley's decided it was time for a change and moved to San Francisco. Over the course of the next 10 years, Thomas invested in a stock that proved to be financially beneficial. With his affairs in order, he and the family moved back to San Diego to attempt to repair what had been ruined by the house those many years prior. Completion of the house was finalised at the end of 1868, and all was well with the Whaley's. For now, sadly, any happiness that was to be found proved to be short-lived, for in 1885, one of their six children, Violet, took her own life. Just two weeks into Violet's marriage, she awoke one morning during their extended honeymoon to find that her husband had left. It turns out her husband was a con artist who only married Violet in the hopes of securing some of the Whaley family fortunes upon their marriage. When this didn't come to fruition, he bolted, leaving Violet alone and beside herself. During these times, society tended to shun women who returned home without their husbands, as it was something that 19th century ladies simply did not do. The divorce took almost a year to finalise and Violet never recovered from the shame. At the young age of 22, she shot herself in the chest with a 32 calibre. She left a suicide note that quoted a poem by Thomas Wood. Another Whaley daughter, Corinne, was engaged to be married at the time of Violet's death, but her fiancé broke off the marriage due to the scandal that the suicide caused the family. After such tragic events, Thomas built the family a new home not far from the Whaley house, leaving their original home vacant for nearly two decades. It was there that Thomas Whaley would meet his fate, dying in 1888 due to his declining health. In the years to follow, the Whaley house fell into disrepair. It wasn't until 1909 that Thomas Whaley's son, Francis, took on the massive undertaking of restoring the Whaley homestead. Instead of making it his home, Francis took this opportunity to turn the restoration into a tourist attraction, promoting its history while entertaining guests with his guitar. The remaining surviving Whaley family Anna Whaley, Thomas's widow, Corinne Lillian, Francis and George all lived in the original Whaley house until their deaths. The Whaley house is perhaps the most famous of all haunted locations in San Diego, with its stories told in magazines, movies and television shows. Even before all the tragedy that befell them, the Whaley's told the local newspaper that they were experiencing a poltergeist that they believed was the ghost of James Yankee Jim Robinson who was hanged on the property for stealing a boat years before the infamous home was built. Not helping matters is the fact that the Whaley house was built upon an old cemetery. The Whaley's long maintained that they heard footsteps in the house, with passerby corroborating the Whaley's claims by reporting apparitions in the home's windows from the streets. During the house's later periods of restoration, workers and visitors claimed to hear strange, unexplained sounds, sights and even smells, most felt a powerful presence whenever inside the residence. This is believed by many to be the lingering ghost of Jim Robinson mentioned earlier. He would torment the living by leaving footprints, stomping on the floor and making chilling noises throughout the boat. Further adding to the spine-tingling tales is that of young baby Thomas Jr. He is said to cry down the Whaley's house's halls, giggle in the distance, and if listening closely, you can even hear the tiny patter of infant footsteps. 
A young woman has been reported on numerous occasions to inhabit the second floor of the house. This ghost is widely believed to be that of young Violet Whaley, still saddened over a broken sham of a marriage. Her longing to linger on the second floor is attributed to the fact that she often locked herself away in her room after her marriage fell apart. Cold spots are frequent throughout the mansion, believed to be Violet's doing as well. The stairwells within the residence have been mentioned by many to be the wandering area for Thomas, Anna and other poltergeists. Thomas is often seen sporting his trademark top hat and coat while looking down from the top of the stairs. It's interesting to add that many people have detected the scent of French perfume permeating the house, a favourite of Anna's that she often wore. Serving to cement the house's hauntings are several sightings of physical objects being manipulated on their own, such as a music room's chandelier, which will swing back and forth at will when no wind is present. Lights will turn off and on without explanation too, and there is frequently the presence of an odd mist that seems to linger. Today the residence serves a, as a museum that is open to the public, where people can get a first-hand look at the house that was meant to be the Whaley's forever home. Instead, it turned out to be forever haunted by the Whaley's.